ultimately you get through Sean O'Malley, you're looking at the, the featherweight champion, right? And it could be Volkanovsky, it could be Yair, but would you want to go into a situation where you get past Sean and you can actually go for double champ status or would it just be a case of, okay, cool. I'm going to now drop this, you know, championship and kind of move up to, to featherweight and make that my permanent home. Uh, when you put it like that, I just gotta, I guess I kind of gotta let's see how every, I guess I kind of got to see how everything plays out and then go about it like that versus just saying what it is. You know, it's, it's good to have a plan, but at the end of the day, man, when you get in these fights, you just never know what's really going to happen. Ideally, I was looking to fight in September, October. Uh, I was hoping September possibly turn around and fight in December and do something really, really special. But uh, you never know what's going to happen when you get into these fights, man. I'm getting older. I've had about six surgeries now. Uh, you can hear on the broadcast, these guys keep constantly talking about my neck. Uh even though my neck, yeah, I still have my neck pains, but I do wish people wouldn't put so much emphasis on that because it almost looks like a crutch. And I don't want a crutch whether I win or lose. Um, so with that being said, yeah, it'd be easier to make the way not have to put so much wear and tear on my body. And this could be twofold. Sometimes people think when you cut more weight, you have to work harder. Uh, I think it's a little twofold for me where I won't, I, I'm still big enough where I'll, I'm going to cut a sizable amount of weight still to get to 145. It's just going to be a little bit easier, 10 pounds easier, which is a night and day difference. And it will allow me some opportunity to actually lift, get stronger, um, maybe not need to put as much wear and tear on the body, which could be good and bad, like I just said. So I, I don't know. And this is the way I analyze and break things down. You just never know what people are doing when they're making these adjustments. And if I do it, I want to make sure I'm doing it the right way. What, what do you walk around at? This morning I was 66 and a half, which is pretty good. I'm slimming down from 170. And I I, I got like four abs in there. I kind of see some some little ripple effects in there a little bit. It's not quite like a like a washing machine, a board washer yet, but uh, you know, a couple of weeks of training and we'll be back. And what do you make of the matchup? You no, know, obviously your your future is gonna be at featherweight, you know, one way or another. So when you look at a matchup between Volk and Yair, how do you kind of break that down? And, you know, would you ideally, you know, down the road, like to have the fight with Volkanovsky, who is now arguably the greatest featherweight of all time? I mean, it'd be cool in terms of name value, I guess, at this point in both their careers. But in terms of the, the more dangerous fight, man, if you know anything about MMA, you know anything about kicks, that Yair guy, he, that's that's the one. That's the dangerous fight. Even like I look at it, I know my coach and I were talking about it and uh, he was saying he thinks that's an easy fight. I'm like, I know, bro. He knows how to fight off of his back now. He's not letting you just take him down and hang out. He's doing damage from his back. He's throwing up submissions from his back. He can kick. He could be free on the feet, knowing if he gets to the ground, he can still have success there. Versus before when he had those fights with Frank Yeager, he got taken down. It, it just, you know, obviously wasn't good. But now, Man, you get one of those kicks to the body, that could be game over. One of those spinning kicks to the head, to the face, lights out. Um, more so where Fokonowski is more so boxing with you. You see that so often, but when you get a special kicker, ah, man, that's that's just dangerous. You know, so um, I think even for myself, that's why people have a lot of issue with me because they're not used to someone coming in and kicking as much as I do. Now you look at Yair, it's me fighting almost a similar version of myself without the high-level transitioning grappling but he's still dangerous you know so um if there was a preference with that being said hey man i go into the fight not to take damage i go in the fight to go out there get in get out try to come out as unscathed as possible so i can have longevity in this and if i'm talking the least threatening in terms of danger like yeah volk can knock me out but we're talking about boxing versus kickboxing I would much rather fight the guy who's going to predominantly just box and throw inside leg kicks. Like the guy who's going to be doing jumping wheel kicks, jumping switch kicks, and could put my lights out. That's the more dangerous and scarier fight versus the other guy where you know what you're kind of getting. It's just he does at such a high level, which is why he's one of the best. And there's no slight to either one of those guys. It's just, I'm like I said, calling it how I see it. And this is how I got to where I am today because I'm I'm real about my assessments and what I'm looking at.
Thanks for watching this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. And hey, do me a favor, hit the like button, drop a comment, give me some feedback, let me know what you think. Share the video with your friends, help me blow this whole thing up. And hey, if you really enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more conversations, more interviews, and more amazing video content coming soon.